welcome to you all. For me, it's a huge pleasure to be here today, beside so many valuable warriors and deeply committed new friends. I'm a lawyer, and as a lawyer, my voice is not just mine. Speaking at this conference, I hope I can address to you what I've learned with many Brazilian comrades of Pabrea, our National Victims Association. It's because of them and because of their struggle that we can nowadays speak about something like the polluter pays principle. Abreu's workers are part of a Brazilian working class, a huge Brazilian working class that mobilized for overcoming military dictatorship and build our democratic view of rights. The 88 Constitution, which for the first time recognized social, environmental, and workers' rights as basic fundamental rights. The 88 Constitution, beside Regulation 6938, enacted just years before, inaugurated an innovative system of protection of human, environmental, and social rights. And also create institutions that can enforce that rights. A labor inspection structure to which belonged Fernanda Gianazzi, a labor prosecutor uh, institution honored uh, a couple uh, of years ago by Adele, and labor courts here represented by two sensitive judges, as many that there are in Brazil. These norms, enforced by those institutions, guarantee that someone who, who does harm to people and to the environment will not escape without being punished. Brazil is now landmark in enforcing the polluter pays principle, recognizing that norms as an indispensable way to make compensations possible. It allows civil society organizations like Abrea to act not only as an amicus curiae or as legal system, but effectively as a collective plaintiff that acts as a representative for the individual victims in the cases, demanding fair compensations for the asbestos industries. Right now, Abrea is a class action plaintiff against two of the biggest multinational companies, Eternit and Sangoban, that work, one of them still works with asbestos. Unfortunately, we still have an operating mine in Brazil, and beyond the, comp uh, the compensations, we act as a frontliner combatant against our 95 law that still allows use of chrysotile in Brazil. Abrea, beside judges and prosecutor associations, filed a constitutional claim asking the Supreme Court to declare that norm, that norm unconstitutional. But we need also to represent the pain of those who are already, who are already victims of the, the responsible behavior of industries. Because of that, we file individual claims in which we demand in which we demand damages of the following species. The capital letters are on Fernanda's account. <laughs> uh, as uh, this emotional, sensitive, and passionate warrior. The cost of care for sick workers, spouses, and relatives, including physicians, psychological assistants, home care, medicines, hospital treatment, special diets, oxygen therapy, and other. This has the main goal of uh, implying the industries to the treatments that an owner of the company would have access if the units affected himself as well the pain and suffering damages and the punitive pedagogical damages because the harm cannot be repeated. Existential damages as well and the loss of a chance, thesis that we develop because of the projects people have to interrupt, the families that were destroyed, 
and lifetime dreams that fell apart as a consequence of those harms. We have as well the existential, uh, the exposure damages. Because of the fear of developing diseases, and here the person is not ill yet, but must survive accompanied by a permanent apprehension of one day have her fate and her plans changed because of this disease. By last, we must emphasize the collective dimension of the liabilities. We also ask for a collective compensation to fund investments in public research, awareness, and prevention. Here we have two successful examples of the use of these collective funds. The first case uh, I can present to you, the Shell Basf case, it was a settlement in which, uh, and, and, and the, the matter at this settlement was a case of chemical contamination in Sao Paulo. And under a settlement, the companies compromised to pay for the construction of a new cancer institute in the city of Campinas. Well, this authorized organizations to receive and disburse this, these damages, these collective damages. And we have here our second example. As a compensation for the victims of asbestos in Brazil, companies were charged in fines which served to fund the asbestos victims and families meeting last year in Campinas, in which ADEO wa was represented very honorably by Linda and Ellen. As I said in the beginning, I don't speak alone here. I speak beside the voice of millions of warriors in Brazil. And right now, you have the opportunity to hear one of them, a special one, Fernanda Gianazzi. Hello, hello everybody. I want to, th to thank Linda, AGO, all friends here, uh, to once again this uh, give us the opportunity to be here and to meet so many friends and experts on asbestos. I would like to emphasize that this uh, settlement, uh, victims from the Shell Basfi, uh, the, co the moral collective fund was around seven, 70 million. Uh, dollars that uh, the public ministry is managing this fund and uh, sharing with different projects, as uh, João Gabriel uh, mentioned. João Gabriel is a dear friend, my colleague, and my chief. Uh, uh, recently, uh, after my retirement, I'm working with them in this project to assist different victims from uh, industrial disasters like mercury, pops, nuclear, and asbestos. And uh, as he said, uh, our Abreas baby and brilliant lawyer uh, explained the collective moral damage fund, uh, which was previous, previous used for governmental actions, having almost no social control lately and thanks to our progressive labor prosecutors has now other directions and purposes as for example to promote researches educative actions and meetings to arise awareness on asbestos here our asbestos meeting joining asbestos victims and their families with Brazilian and international experts and activists last, last October in Campinas City, uh, far nine kilometers from Sao Paulo, the capital of our state. Here we approved the, the letter from Campinas City where in the final document with the, uh, which was approved the main guidelines to lead us in the months, uh, months ahead, especially regarding the use of uh, digital medias to communicate among us 
considering the long geographical gap that separates our group's bases. In Brazil, the use of WhatsApp has become very popular as everybody has a cell phone. We got uh, approval for another project from the Collective Moral Fund paid by the companies fined to not enforce the law that banned asbestos in one of the 10 states which have already banned or not enforced our labor code, which rat ratified the ILO 162 Convention on Asbestos. I, do, I'm don't, I don't know if I am able to show here uh, this link, but uh, now our website plans, oh, sorry, plans to be one channel to communicate, and uh, uh, it's one of the medias we are using to communicate uh, in the whole country. Here, I would like to show you the geopolitics on asbestos and uh, the major worldwide producer, okay? I emphasize uh, that Russia will block again the inclusion of the chrysotile in the Annex 3 of the Rotterdam Convention. Brazil, thanks to the social pressure, will support the inclusion in the next COP, the COP 8. Next Tuesday, we will have a meeting with our diplomatic body to push them to keep a protagonism in the next COP 8 and not to give up under the asbestos lobby pressure. The map of Brazil and the status uh, that I can't show you, uh, we have uh, 10 states out of 26 plus the federal district where the ban asbestos is in charge. Slowly and as we say, killing a lion per day, we and united with uh, all the members that support us, we will be able to win this battle against one of the most powerful enemy of humanity. Together, we are stronger. A luta continua, as we say in Portuguese, the struggle goes on. Thank you.